What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Clone Zone. I'm Alex. I'm Molly. <laughs> You're still not used to doing that. No, I'm not. Sorry. I had <laughs> This is the, your idea. I had the, our stream pulled up, and so it started playing in my ear right as you started talking. And I was like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> That's why I asked, are you ready, before I hit go live. You and know you I yes. never am ready. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say yes. All right, I'm just going to pull our guest in here because I saw him dancing to the intro music and I want to keep that energy going. So, hey, what's up, Jared? Hello uh, there. Well, welcome back yes. to the Clone Zone. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be back in the Clone Zone, like last season of Bad Batch. This is uh, this is very exciting, you know, the, 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 mark a nice moment in uh, Star Wars history here. And I'm very excited to talk about this episode. Hey, we we had you on a season ago, almost exactly to the episode. I think it was yeah. six. Well, because that's what occurred to me this week. Because I was like, was I on the episode right after Alex's birthday last year? I like <laughs> I had a conversation with my. I was like, as I was trying to like do the math, and I think you're right, and I think that was the case. So happy belated birthday! Oh, as well. Thanks. Wasn't fishing for that, but thank you. <laughs> no, still. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you what do you got to drink there? I got some uh, sheepdog peanut butter whiskey. My uh, my sipping drink of choice. That's my jam. I think we we have something similar. Uh, but tonight, uh, that's not what we have. Molly, what do we have? We have. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> I was like, wait, how are we doing this? <laughs> and then it cut to just a still shot of us. And I was like, what is happening? Did we I just threw freeze? that together like right before we went live. <laughs> he was saying, I'm working on one last thing. I'm like, oh, what's he cooking? It was, uh, it was, so I, nice knew, I knew that you are already annoyed with the meme a little bit. I saw you tweet that. So I was like, <laughs> now I want to do it even more. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I almost passed out i was laughing so hard when i saw that first one where it's like your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough that he goes over to the you know opens up the chest and it's a bunch of beer and that was funny and i kept seeing all the clips and then the next day my entire feed yeah was this damn beer and i was like and it was and i'm and i'm not gonna lie most of them weren't funny. Most of them did not have that level of unhinged, like absurd placement <laughs> that the other, that like that again, like, you know, like this very beautiful moment in like, like, like a, like a moment that is in the DNA of star Wars. The first time Luke Skywalker holds and ignites a lightsaber, you know, and the explanation of the Jedi and the Force, all of this stuff, the ha being so irreverent to put a beer commercial right there is what makes that so <laughs> deeply funny. So, like, the fact that most of them were just an instance of, hey, someone is holding something in this scene. And then that, that was when I started to get annoyed. But the clip still made me laugh, and that was the best one. That was the best one because we got <laughs> ambushed by it. <laughs> you had oh, no choice. I should, I should make it clear, this is not actually <laughs> Cerveza Crystal. I could not find it anywhere in Atlanta. Mine's uh, taped. Yeah. I did look. Uh, <laughs> that was a Sam Adams hoppy lager. That, uh, I was, that was going to be my next question was, do you guys have Cerveza Crystal? Oh, man, <laughs> I wish. Damn. Oh, I like that's the good. marketing works. I genuinely want to try it. <laughs> if I ever see it, I will get excited. <laughs> oh, man. I just I was talking to my girlfriend about the Cerveza Crystal commercials where she was like, well, what how did they just keep going with the movie? And I, she was like, what, "What does Luke just not have a lightsaber? Do they just edit the the training seeker scene out of the movie?" And and I was like, "I don't know how they do it. I mean, New Hope's the one to do it because he uses it the least." But then, <laughs> and it was after we had that conversation, I see the clip of like it's Obi Wan like on the deck of the Falcon in that conversation where he they cut to him digging around in like the sleeves of his tunic, and he pulls <laughs> one out, and I'm like. Oh my god, they just edit out the training droid scene. That's don't so funny. You know, yeah. <laughs> you've taken, you've taken your first steps bad. into a larger world. Who oh, needs that line of dialogue or whatever? All we need is Cerveza Crystal. Oh 
my god. I made a short version too, so be careful what you say. It can happen at any moment. <laughs> Uh, real quick, I want to say hi to Alden. <laughs> so glad to see Molly, Molly's husband, and Molly's friend all together for this fantastic episode. <laughs> thank you, uh, Alden. Thanks, Alden. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Alden Diaz, the man who answers the question, what if we got a dark and gritty reboot of Ken Knapsack? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I was going to bring this one up, too, because I don't get it, but I think Jared will. Uh, from our friend wow. Eli. Yes. Uh, excited to see my good friend Jared on here, but this episode was a real bummer, dude. Bummer. Almost as bad as Cookie Cop. Thank God he's gone. Okay. So <laughs> there's layers here. Uh, Cookie Cop, our infernal, terrifying mascot, mm. uh, who in the uh, when last I was here, the rematch between Scotty and I had not happened yet. Um, when it did happen, uh, Scotty beat me very narrowly. And to, to kind of wrap up the plot line we had going on in Epic Confrontations, the Star Wars trivia show that Eli runs, um, the whole the whole the, the the kind of joke and gimmick of that plot line was that I was possessed and kind of like enthralled by Cookie Cop. So in the event that Scotty beat me, which I want to make clear, nobody thought was going to happen, Scotty and Eli included. We all thought I was going to win. And then I didn't. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad that we I'm glad that I didn't because you would not have the moment where Scotty went on to eBay, bought a version of Cookie Cop to have in Louisiana. <laughs> and then upon beating me, uh, beat it to death with a hammer. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's towards the end of the stream. Uh, he's a, he's just wailing on this thing with a hammer. And like at one point creates this horrifically amazing tableau where he hits it so hard a it sparks off the ground and b he just gets a chunk of that cookie cop's face wrapped around the hammer <laughs> and is just holding it up to the camera like 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 a like 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 someone just captured big game like it was it was terrifying um but no the real cookie cop lives uh somehow cookie cop returned uh and then bummer <laughs> dude bummer i love i get to explain all these bits at, at top here um the the faction that Alden is in in Epic Confrontations uh, may or may Which not is a Star Wars trivia contest. Yeah, Star Wars trivia, yeah. Star Wars trivia show. Yeah, um, they may or may not have purchased a cameo from one Imanis Fondi mm. mm -hmm. um, that kind of had its moment on Star Wars Twitter, uh, where Imanis Fondi was like, "Hey, this is for Jared the Dark Jedi. Uh, I heard you're a pretty big Star Wars fan, but you're pretty booty at Star Wars trivia." <laughs> Bummer, dude. Bummer. Oh, Bummer. that you're four and zero oh against Alden, and that you're afraid of him. Bummer, dude. Bummer. <laughs> Classic. So, yeah, just rubbing some salt in the wound. I'm having my moment on Star Wars Explained. Oh my god. They, Elo doesn't like this either. He doesn't like. way I'm being. Yeah. I'm being attacked by the mob right now. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I do want to get to Bad Batch soon, but because this is like slightly on topic, I just thank you, John Booz, for the effort it took to make the beer. <laughs> Cassie, thank you for the super chat. Says Hunter and Crosshair wouldn't have fought if they had some cerveza crystal. To All jokes aside, I love that Crosshair is part of the gang again. <laughs> and uh, Scotty Heron, thank you for the super chat. Was already going to send this in, but the whole convo makes it better. If you had to choose a spot to splice a Cerveza Crystal ad into the episode, where would you put it? You already have the best one. You put it on Twitter. That's... You already have the place to put it. Uh, that, I figured that was it. I mean, you know, anytime someone opens a box, it feels like fair game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I feel like... I feel like you could have edited one in where Omega's talking to him on the beach... Like we're just like, oh, like you take a look at your hand, and then like she he kind of turns over. Like, hell, you could even do it anytime. Like crosshairs, like ha like muscle spasm kicks in. It's like ah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Crystal, <laughs> you know. Like... <laughs> He's just got the shakes. He hasn't had one in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, God. That, that seems a good one. Az Az could have. Uh, a bottle out there that Crosshair is trying to shoot. <laughs> yeah, well, that'd be such a waste of. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, God, oh, hold on! Oh, hold on. Ah, no! <laughs> it's I. I have to slot back and forth between oh. tabs. <laughs> oh man! 
That's that's too good. That's too good. You 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 completely made me do a one eighty. I love this meme again. I'm all I'm all the way back on board for this meme completely when, again. When you can hear the guy saying it I and think, like the yeah. music and everything behind it, it makes it ten times better. <laughs> You're a hundred percent right. I think I think every single one I was boohooing if it was a video and it so they like it yeah, every time it works now. You're right. You're right. As long as there's the music. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shu. We grant you the rank of master, but we do not grant you this Cerveza Crystal Young Skywalker. <laughs> not old enough yet. <laughs> oh, I, th <laughs> oh, I think Scotty steered us in the right direction. Uh, so we can actually start talking about the Bad Batch in let's this episode. Let's do it. Yeah, let's talk about the Bad Batch for once on this Bad Batch show. <laughs> uh, uh, Jared, what did you think of episode five, The Return? I really did enjoy this one. I think that on the whole, you know, there were there were a lot of little character beats that really were for me. Very subtle, um, very, very, very under, not, 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 overhanded character beats that just stayed in a very subtle place um, that just really soared for me. You know, I think that you had moments of this like silent uh, animosity between um, I apologize. My dog is going ape shit now. Too. <laughs> we're, we're uh, it's not a good stream unless there's dogs barking and exactly around somewhere. Uh, but yeah, no. So like you have like those moments where you get this like subtle animosity between Hunter and Crosshair and like where they're very clearly not being forthright with each other about where that animosity is coming from. Um, that I thought was really interesting that, you know, that while you have Crosshair, you know, clearly feeling uncomfortable, uh, clearly feeling the pressure of having to like own up for his mistakes here. Um, he is also going to bat for Hunter. Um, where I think Hunter, I think like one of the best moments of the episode, um, uh, it was what my little drawing was for this one was like when he's, when Hunter is like picking up all the helmets of these fallen clones, I, I want so badly to hear Hunter's inner monologue in that scene, because I feel like there has to be this level of, okay, Crosshair finally gets it mixed with why couldn't you get it with us? Why did it take clones you didn't know? Clones who weren't your brother, these regs. Why did it take them before you realized what the Empire was doing to us? And now you've grown a conscience. Um, that I just, I, I think there was just a lot of complicated, big emotions happening between the characters in this episode. And that just really, really sold me on this one. I, I think that's a good discussion point to, to jump back to like the very first episode of the series. Yeah. It was. At first, it wasn't about clones at all. It was more just like what's morally right. Yeah, and they were like hunting down Saw Gerrera's people and stuff. But then it was kind of yeah, midway through season one, and definitely at the end, they they gave him that opportunity to choose them to come with them. Yeah, and turned it down. Uh, I, I think that's a great inner monologue for Hunter. S some good literal head cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Molly, what did you think of the episode? I liked it a lot. I was excited to revisit the outpost because it's such an important place for Crosshair's character turn. Like that's kind of where he ultimately decides his fate and decides to take charge of what's going on. And I'm glad that they went back there. We got to see giant ice worms too which is very dune appropriate yes <laughs> okay we were debating this do you think that was intentional on the release or just lucky happenstance i don't know it's, i it's i really think close. it was i think it was lucky i do think it was lucky i can't put into words just how lucky that while everybody as i joked off air like everybody has spice fever right now um i can't get enough of dune uh, like, oh, and right on cue. Hey, you guys want some more worms? You want some more giant <laughs> subterranean worms? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> if if it wasn't on purpose, they got very lucky with the timing on this so one. I wonder. So originally Dune was going to come out in like November and then it got pushed. So I think that that was like the lucky part of it. And I wonder if they were going to have like a two episode premiere. And then someone was like, hey, if we do a three episode premiere. <laughs> Then <laughs> right after Dune, we'll Maybe. get more. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get yeah. more. Pe more people will be uh, worm pilled right now. <laughs> 
Yeah. Everybody loves worms. <laughs> but ultimately, I loved the episode. Just a lot of cool wide shots of like the snowy outpost and a lot of nice like quiet moments with crosshair you kept seeing that ice vulture flying around too i was like so fixated on that thing and i went back and watched the outpost episode from season two and mayday says you know like oh they're vicious animals but they find a way to survive and i feel like crosshair is really like connecting with that idea that he is vicious, but he's finding a ways to survive. But now he's like, okay, I have to figure out who I am now that I'm not this vicious monster. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just crosshair. It's, it is such a great motif coming back. Like the, the, the outpost, um, the titular outpost is like, it almost feels like crosshair's version of the cave on Dagobah. You know, where it's like, the, like, this is very much like, you know, what's in there, only what you take with you, you know, and I think there is so much here that is, that is begging Crosshair to just let it out, to just truly finally say the quiet part out loud um, of what he's feeling, you know, like, and I think it speaks a lot to that, you know, Crosshair, Crosshair understands what people think about him. <clears throat> And in many ways, I think he has this like pathological need to prove them right. That it's mm -hmm. like, well, if you're good, if you're going to think I'm this ruthless, you know, SOB, I'll be your ruthless SOB. You know, that like when Hunter's like, tell me what happened. Hunter does not say I disobeyed direct orders and fight off the handle because I finally realized how disposable we clones are to the Empire. It was, yeah, I shot my superior officer because I'm a traitor just like you think I am yeah. that like, he's like, like crosshair. Like it's, it is again, it's very weird psychological thing for him as a character that he refuses to even like let his better side show that he refuses to own that part of himself. And I think it's because like, again, as it's been talked about so much, you know, Hunter is this savant tracker wrecker has super strength. Te uh, Echo is a cyborg tech had this like incredible mind, you know, Crosshair is a killer. Crosshair is a killer. That's it. You know, he has this incredible accuracy and is a great shot. And that's who he is. And I think that because all he had, all the only thing he can do with his enhancement is be a killer. I think he's just fully accepted this idea that like, I am a monster. I am, I am, I am, an, I am the ultimate predator on the battlefield and, you know, accepting, what that represents and accepting that maybe I can be more than that is so difficult for him, even in the face of being able to like literally show Hunter the remains of Mayday and be like, we were in it together by ourselves in the snow. You know, we were, we, we were on death's door together as a team. And that was the moment I realized you were right. He can't do that. And part of it is, I think is the saying you were right part. But it's just there's just so much that happens in this episode that it's, it's just such fantastic little character beats. I love it. Yeah, he he's still grappling too, like with not feeling worthy of being yeah. a good guy yeah. yet. He's he's still working on that. So yeah, it's really fun to see him get closer with the group in like subliminal ways like he, he's fully in with omega he i think he can show his softer side to her he even chuckles in this episode yeah oh yeah when she's like you're my little brother don't forget that <laughs> i loved that but and he he gives her a little laugh uh but he also is now like petting batcher quite a bit i didn't yeah. notice it on my first watch but going back and watching it two and three times i was like every time batcher comes up to him he pets her and Aww. It, it, I, I think that he just the same way Hunter doesn't trust trust Crosshair. Crosshair doesn't fully trust Hunter and probably hasn't accepted that he is deserving of Hunter's love again. But yeah. he's like he's like I, I think I deserve Omega's love and I like this dog now. So I yeah. think he's getting there. And you know yeah. what? Crosshair could be great at lots of stuff. He could be great at darts. He could be a good archer i guess that could still involve killing but like 
his specialty is not for nothing. That's it, you know, it's it's not great right now. Like someone put in chat, it's what fifty three percent accuracy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that is also <laughs> such a great thing for Crosshair that it's like, all right, what's the one thing I'm good at? Shooting and killing. What am I no longer good at? Shooting and killing. Well, damn. You know, gotta find something else. <laughs> I love that development for him. I also, yeah. Molly, agree that I really hope that he finds a way to shift his talents into something more positive that he enjoys. Uh, yeah, maybe he won't because of the hand, but the the same way that Wrecker on Pabu found value in the Pabu community, being able to help rebuild things, and yeah, like all of the other Bad Batch members are able to use their talents elsewhere. I, I hope Crosshair finds a way to do that. And that's not their only talents, you know. Right. Maybe he's got a, a hidden talent that he hasn't found yet. <laughs> he's a great and juggler. It's, and it's love. <laughs> <laughs> or juggling. Omega, I like that too. <laughs> I have four pins going at this point. <laughs> Throw me a fifth. <laughs> <laughs> So also, I, I, get this man is toothpick, by the way. He's out, oh, of the, yeah. he's, he's out of the clank. Get this man a toothpick. I mean, he, he had, had it. one. He had and one then and then he dropped it. His he shaky did? hand I dropped it. Oh. I was like, how many times are his, his shakes going to betray him? He lost his toothpick. Oh, man, that is that that might be the rough, the roughest moment so far. <laughs> oh, God, I didn't I didn't catch that. So I was going to I I got some pushback today because I said this was probably my least favorite of the season so far. And people thought, Oh, I can't believe you didn't like it. I didn't say that. I do. I liked this episode. I did not dislike it. Alex, why do you hate star Wars all of I a know, sudden? Every time, every time <laughs> <laughs> he's but, changed his name to star Wars is dead. Explained he's, he's... <laughs> why star Wars is dead again. <laughs> uh, see you next week. But <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed a lot of the episode. I just thought it was what, I expected it didn't really surprise me yeah and it was like okay we need hunter and crosshair to get on the same page they're going to by the end of the episode also there's a giant monster which was fun like I like the giant monsters but when Wrecker screams it out <laughs> I'm like yeah th there is almost always a giant monster to help them solve yeah. their personal issues yeah. That that scene when Wrecker was running by and went, oh my god, it's Shai Halud. I was like, yeah, man, absolutely. Anyway, doing jokes. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I, I was, I agree with you. I think that there was a lot of like, you know, this is the clear next chunk. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by Echo. I was not expecting to see Echo yet. Um, but yeah, no, I, I it, it did feel very expected. I will say that like I, I like the fact that there is still so much tension between Hunter and Crosshair. There is still so much that those two need to unpack. It's just that they're at the point where it's like, I don't think every conversation is going to boil down to like a shoving match. You know, yeah. that like 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 they are no longer going to be physically hostile with each other. But there's still a lot of a lot of growth that needs to happen. And I really do hope Crosshair kind of lays that all out and is very forthright about like, hey man, like here's how this went down. You were right. But by the same token, I think that Crosshair also like feels like he doesn't need to do that, which I think is a great beat for him as a character. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like again, you know, Alex, you were you in the review you put up today where they're making the Zuko comparisons. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of love the idea of Crosshair having like a Zuko thing, but on his own terms where it is like, yeah, like I got to make amends with everybody, but also like, it's not like this turn came out of nowhere for y'all. It's not like I didn't almost get myself killed to be like, y'all need to get to Tantis now or wherever it was, or wherever it was. But like, it's like, but he, like, he was like, I pulled that alarm. I almost got killed doing the right thing. So like I've already made my good faith just good faith gesture. And I again I think that starting from that place of well I tried to give my life in Omega's name and clearly that isn't enough for you is such a cool place to start with him. And I think we've already made a good bit of progress that all of that has not yet been resolved but enough of it has been resolved so that we can get to like the juicier more emotional parts of it. It's it's kind of like 
in his mind, he he did what he owed them as part of the mission. As yeah, uh, like he, I'm defying orders to help you, but he hasn't done everything he needs to do like emotionally as they are yeah. brothers as well which i i loved all of the brother fighting going on oh yeah in mm-hmm. this episode they literally shoved each other at one yeah. point <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looked it looked like hunter was going to swing on him for a second like just straight <laughs> up like it was going to be fisticuffs but it, i mean the, it's at kinda... the very end when hunter's walking over and walks right past him but he's carrying the ice or the snow shovel i was like shovel fight <laughs> Oh, fight. Well, fight I, it out. I, Hunter like doesn't like to share Omega. Not that she is a thing, but you know, Hunter gets jealous when she starts imitating Fee or someone else. Yeah. And now she's starting to bond with Crosshair. And I think that probably really bugs him. Yeah. She's she's so much older and wiser now, though. Like, and we saw that moment on Pabu where Hunter was about to make her stay back with Wrecker. Mm. And she was like, absolutely not. I- I'm going with like, you can't, you can't s- stop me. So I liked that. I liked that little beat a lot. Just the idea that Hunter, it didn't last long, but he did fall back into old habits of being overprotective and she can't come on the mission, which was kind of the first season him having to get over that. <laughs> I won't lie. I kind of, I kind of started to roll my eyes and like, are we really doing this specific thing again? Like we are all the way back to no Omega. You can't come on the mission. Mm-hmm. And then 15 minutes into the mission, where's Omega? She's above us, sir. Oh no, Omega's on the mission now. Like I was like, <laughs> come on, we we cannot do this again. We can't. And I, and I, and again, I love that. Like, yeah, he fell back into those old habits as a defense mechanism. But he relented immediately, you know, like for a second there, I thought it was going to be that Omega and Wrecker were waiting on the ship. It's like, no, Omega was like, no, I'm a part of this team. I have a duty to the clones on Tantus. You're not going to bench me. And Hunter was like, you're right. And I just, you know, they had that moment where it felt like it was going to be a bit of a regression. And it was, but intentionally in a good way. And they showed his growth past that. And I just, is, is again, there's just one of those very many small, very subtle character beats that really enlivened this episode for me. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's good. It's a good reminder that Star Wars does just to say that, hey, just because Hunter got over that fear before, it doesn't mean he's never going to have that fear again. Yeah. He's going to grapple with it. Well, that'd be a great example. Whenever Guns for Hire came out last year with The Mandalorian, like the amount of people who kind of like lost their minds over well i guess din Djarin just his, his entire character is just like back to zero because he's angry about droids again and it's like yeah he's looking at like an entire city full of the exact kind of droid that wiped out his village i would it would be weirder if he did not have some type of trauma response to this mm-hmm. you know we're ex- exactly like that like just because someone has like for the most part overcome that issue as a character doesn't mean that they won't fall back and hit my head off the shelf and they will fall back onto that behavior eventually. Like it is what makes that development important is showing that they still retain the ability to fall back into worse behaviors, but have developed enough to reject it. Um, so yeah, no, I, I also very much like that moment. Well, Molly, I know you were uh, getting really obsessive with the ice vulture, which you already mentioned. Yeah, but I, I wanted to talk about it a little more. Uh, what do you think it represents over the course of the episode and the outpost, uh, where it's circling and then flying away at the end? Well, you yeah, you pointed out that it was kind of circling and then at the towards the end it it does kind of fly away, which I didn't really notice that as much. I just after going back and watching the outpost episode and hearing what Mayday had to say about it being vicious, but surviving. It was kind of like, it just reminded me of the clones were created to be soldiers, but they, you know, that's not who they are to their core. And they are figuring that out and they're finding a way, a way to survive. And, you know, the, over the course of those two different episodes, we never saw the ice vultures do anything vicious. They were just chilling. That's true. Flying around being free. 
And I liked that Crosshair kind of kept focusing on that. Uh, and like, y you know, after what Mayday says, I felt like he kind of looked at the ice vultures and was like, I don't see vicious. They're just free. And so I don't know, like it, it, it kind of represents a bunch of different stuff for me, but I just thought it was a nice motif. Like you said, Jared, it just made sense to me. <laughs> Absolutely. And I just, I think there's just something so beautiful about, you know, like crosshair. I, again, like I just think there's like a pathological level when he hears brutal, vicious survivor, he sees a mirror, you know, mm -hmm. that like that, that he, he is so, he feels so defined by that. And then again, like being back at this outpost, being back at this outpost with his brothers and Omega shoulder to shoulder working together, like, you know, if, if his first trip to the outpost was the Dagobah cave of evil, where Luke beheads Vader and sees himself in the helmet, like this is what would have happened if Luke was able to return to the cave, you know, mm -hmm. where this is Luke, like, yeah, I get it now. And whatever I see, I know how to handle. You know, like he wouldn't walk into the cave with his lightsaber. And I think there's a similar thing happening with Crosshair that he like keeps looking at this thing. And I think is slowly coming to the realization that like, I am not just the parts of myself that I am afraid of. I, I think know? that's such a cool comparison because you, you immediately made me think of, I, I think it was the Empire Strikes Back from a certain point of view that talks about the point of view of the cave. And uh, and in other stories, like I think the Yoda comic, we see that Yoda continues to go back to the cave just to kind of re up on what's bothering him. Like, let's see what it shows me today. <laughs> what what fears am I yeah. grappling with? What do I need to work on? <laughs> and so the idea of returning to to a place like that and this being crosshairs is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is truly just so beautiful. And, you know, I, 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 uh, the, that moment of, I said it earlier, I just want to reiterate it. That moment of crosshair very reverently putting the helmets back on that crate and watching Hunter, watch him do it. Like that, mm -hmm. that is, I think that is the moment that has stuck with me so much. Well, it's, yeah. it's very much, you know, he keeps saying that he has no interest in going back to Tantus. He doesn't want to help the other clones. That's what he said all episode four. But yeah. here we see, like, he cares. He doesn't want to see those helmets just scattered on the floor. He wants them put up in a place of respect. So, yeah, it, it's not hard to guess that down the line he's going to be all in on the the mission to Tantus. Oh, of course, and like with like Hunter's perspective on it again, like comparing it to like the greater you know Star Wars narrative. Like I feel like, I feel like Hunter watching Crosshair so mournfully pick up these trooper helmets. Um, it almost feels like 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 how would somebody like Reva feel watching vader kill the emperor you know where it's like oh okay cool why'd you still have to do this to me though right that, like, <laughs> like like it like it like it kind of complicates the legacy there where it's like i want to be angry at you i want to feel betrayed by you but i feel like you get it now you do get it and it makes me angry that you didn't get it when we mattered like, why didn't we matter in this equation? It, it, it is just so dense. And I, I, I need a certain point of view, bad batch season three right now. <laughs> I want it on paper. What is going through Hunter's head? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I, I guess it could also be confusing for Hunter just because, yeah, he doesn't know what happened there. Crosshair is not going to sit down and be like, okay, story time. Here's what went down when I spent time here. And I feel like Hunter's a little confused that he's showing compassion towards these random clones and not yeah. them. He's like Ron Swanson, where if you try to get him to say something, he's just going <laughs> to not do it. Yeah, yeah. it's going to make him not want to just, even more. I don't want to be told what to do, so I'm just going to clam up. Yeah, which well, is I think, it's why 
it's why Omega works so well in these situations because she always finds a way to just get him to open up on his own through like other ways. She's she's just really good at that. Absolutely. And like, well, again, the thing that I think is just so fascinating, like we, we talked about this, but it just, it's so, so dense and I love it. Hunter doesn't know that Crosshair flew off the handle in the very place they're standing. He mm -hmm. doesn't know that. He knows that there's an outpost. He knows that Hunter, or he knows that Crosshair was like, yeah, like there wasn't a whole lot of people there. We could, we could get through there lickety split. Um, Hunter does not, again, like he doesn't know why Crosshair did what he did. Crosshair, like I said earlier, very intentionally is like, yeah, I killed my superior officer. And yeah, did he didn't say that he did that right there, did he? No, no. He it's just he like just says, I killed my he, I killed an imperial officer. He says because, that at least the very end. Yeah. Does he say it was? Did he? Does he mention it was that outpost at the end? I don't remember. I think so. Does he? I I, I, I was I wasn't sure, but j j but just even that initial exchange, that it's again like it is crosshair. Like I will be the monster you want me to be because my whole identity is causing harm mm -hmm. and it disables him from being able to accept grace. And it also makes him inherently more standoffish to everybody else. Um, but again, he's so complex because he even goes, he still goes to bat for Hunter when they're still on Pabu. That like, yeah. Hey man, don't hold it against him. He's just worried about you. Mm -hmm. Like, and again, like it's crosshair. Hunter wouldn't do that for him. Right now, Hunter would not be like, hey, listen, I know Crosshair can be kind of a jerk. Right. He's really glib, <laughs> like it's he's just he's not really good at the whole feelings thing. Hell no. Hunter's not doing that for Crosshair right now. If not Crosshair, yet. if if Crosshair had popped off in this episode, there would not have been a after the fact, hey, I understand you gotta give him a little bit of leeway. None of that. None at all. And I think that makes it, this dynamic really interesting. That like up to this point, you feel like it would be Hunter who would be more gracious that Omega had rubbed off on. But Hunter has had too many brushes with losing everything coming this close. Tech is gone. You know, like Omega was gone for so long, you know, and all of that comes after being just absolutely stabbed in the back by Crosshair several times, uh, several times concurrently. So... Hunter losing some of that like almost childlike mercy and wonder that Omega like imparts onto people, um, I think is also a fantastic character be for him because he is so much less forgiving. He is so headstrong now that like he, like the wheels are kind of falling off of him. And you know, I think getting crosshair back officially, once they finally have an adult conversation about how they're feeling. Uh, will be like kind of that last bit that it's like, okay, we're back on the straight and narrow here to go on this adventure and, you know, do what we have to do. Hmm. Well, I was going to get into our drawings. Uh, <laughs> yes. We, uh, I'll go ahead and share mine first because it was something that people have been asking about for a while. And I'm, I'm glad to see that uh az is alive and well <laughs> kind of he's being shot at a lot but that scene of just him out there in the water holding fruit for crosshair to shoot uh <laughs> gave me a good solid laugh but also i was like okay thank god he's still around because people if only asking about him if only it had been on his head but that's basically what he was doing I mean, it's better to be on the arm holding it out far away. I, sure. I, I mean, right now, I mean, once he saw his accuracy plummet, he was like, okay, I'm just yeah. going to just He hold probably this started, he was like, put it on his head, and then he saw the first shot, and he was like, and it's out here. <laughs> and that, but that would have been such a point of contention, because then Hunter would have been like, Crosshair, why'd you shoot AZ? He's like, I can't control my hand muscles anymore, Hunter. It's like, oh, you <laughs> shot him in the face. I watched you do it. You shot him. <laughs> um, it would have been a whole thing. It's like I can't control my blood. But yeah, that that's that's how they're gonna do. They're gonna bring AZ back, and everyone will be like, "Yay!" And then immediately shot in the head. Yeah, he will. He will be unceremoniously shot in the head by accident. <laughs> uh, he. Will I like be, that. He, even he will be like Marvin in Pulp Fiction, just accidentally <laughs> popped. 
even AZ gets to retire at, at the the glorious island life of Pabu, which is probably going to get ruined at some point in this season, which I am not looking so forward bad. to. Every so every shot we've seen so far of Pabu is like, it's great. It's, oh my gosh, Echo's here. Let's go hug. And I'm like just waiting for something terrible to happen there. It's all bongos and my ties on Pabu right now. Mm -hmm. And everyone, and it, it's just so, it's just this funny, it's just, it's this funny exercise. And it's very meta that like, it's, it's almost like um, when the Rise of Skywalker came out, like there's that moment where the audience is supposed to be like, oh my God, Chewbacca's dead. And then there were people like the three of us and all the people watching at home who went, oh my God, they killed Chewbacca. Wait, there's a scene in the trailer where he's yeah. running down the hallway and <laughs> Chewbacca is probably alive, and it's just and it's that moment where it's like, man, bongos and my ties on Pabu, but it's like I know the Empire is gonna come knocking. I look at the trailers <laughs> frame by frame. Yeah. <laughs> we do this to ourselves. I know. We know I, I hate it whenever stuff like that happens. I'm like, why do I do this? <laughs> oh man. Um, I'll do my drawing next. Uh, so, so th this is, this is a little, it's kind of, it's kind of, con it's high concept, but bad. Cause I can't, <laughs> I can't My two draw. favorite things. It's high concept and it's bad. Uh, I can't draw, nor can I see right now. Cause I don't have my glasses. So it's all kinds of fun. So what I was going for here was like the crosshair. crosshair. Is that a Goomba? This, uh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bash my head in with the shield. Um, no, was, you know, I was I was trying to make uh, Mayday's helmet with the bandage stuff on. Oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, okay. like, that, that it's that it like that very much felt like the heart of the episode to me. Is mm -hmm. this somber moment where Crosshair is trying to lay these guys to rest as best he can, um, knowing that there's nothing he can do, knowing that he is in many ways complicit for what has happened to them. Um, but that that is kind of the emotional center of the episode. And I felt like it was kind of perfectly on the nose to put like the crosshair crosshair on there that, you know, it's all of that and all of that responsibility and that moment and that beat uh, really affected me this time around. So yeah, there's my uh, crosshair Goomba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Um, <laughs> I was challenged by a couple of people actually to draw batcher digging in the snow which i was not originally going to draw but i was like i'll i'll give it a shot so it was a really cute moment when batcher decides oh we dig in <laughs> oh we dig in ah! <laughs> i love it oh i just noticed that you put the bird up top too the, but yeah the vulture i had to put the vulture in there <laughs> a little scale bird. that was a very uh important part of the, the episode too but digging in the snow takes precedence over everything else <laughs> <laughs> that was just such a cute moment and so many of batcher's moments are so real because you know hunter and wrecker start digging and batcher like trots over and looks at both of them and takes a beat and it was like oh hell yeah let's do this and he just looks like the best at digging so the, i just i love her so much batcher has that dog in her the, yeah. <laughs> the dog attention to detail for Batcher is so good. Like the the tail wagging, the the barking, the running around. Oh, I put the Just tail the in there animated. too. I managed to sneak it in at the last minute. Little waggy tail. It's she's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is so profoundly bad. No, my, it's not. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, oh wow, he's, 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 oh no, he was like, here's, here's, here's my Goomba Darth Vader I made. It's, you can't see. <laughs> We've been see. how many, how many seasons of shows have we been doing these whiteboard drawings? Uh, we started with Book of Boba Fett because it was like supposed to be a silly book report, uh, and then we just kept it going. And so, I decided that maybe I should take more than the five minutes before we go live to do my drawings. So once I did that, I was like, okay, I can do this. I, had I think very, this is our seventh series doing it. I had yeah. a very real moment sitting in my living room watching the episode a second time, like an hour and a half ago. And I went, I know what a clone trooper helmet looks like. <laughs> 
it was very much the John Mulaney, like, first off, a big ass H, you know, it was that, but I was like, I can't get the little mouth thing. It's a circle. It's a circle. Fine. A <laughs> squiggle for the face too. Oh no. I, um, I mean, I always find a, a shot from the episode to try to copy just by like looking at it. So yeah, if I had to just draw from pure memory, it would not look very good. <laughs> I always look at a frame or something. I need reference. Uh, but based off of Molly's drawing, I, I figured this was appropriate. Thank you, Guiglio, for the super chat. Who is winning the snow digging competition, Wrecker or Batcher? Well, Wrecker did get better at digging after he saw Batcher do it, but I think Batcher wins. I, I think it's got to be Batcher because I think Batcher might have an anatomical advantage or two on this one. <laughs> she she, she dug stacked. that area Up out just like, so yeah. fast. And then when Wrecker got to the other door, he immediately like he was sad. He uh -huh. didn't want to dig and he wanted Batcher. So I think that says that Batcher could have done it faster and better. I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> And speaking I do, I do, I do lots of versus stuff on the Nerd Academy and uh, Batcher v Wrecker Digathon. I'm <laughs> firmly Team Batcher. Your, your next versus episode should be who's the, the next, best digger in uh, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, thanks, Andy, for being a member of the Bigs Mega Fans. Loved the ep, but my stress levels watching it are so much higher now that we have Batcher. Fully it's agree on oh, yeah. that as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's 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 so unfair because I, I want to give Star Wars the benefit of the doubt because Star Wars does not have a habit of like killing off a critter, right? You oh, know, yeah. like even when some do take a do take a fall, like on Endor, the majority and the ones that we know always are fine you know like even like the even like the even like the glup ewoks <laughs> are fine like mm -hmm. like like tell like, that to nanta nanta but, except uh, for nanta well <laughs> see and this is why you were a champion i did not know that one that gets blown to hell was oh. <laughs> To keep the joke I made the last time I was on here, I'm sure Eli is writing that question right now. <laughs> um, but, but no, you know, like, but like Wicket and Paplu and uh, you know Chirpa, everybody, everybody who like we know is fine, right? So like, I'm I feel confident the Batcher is going to be safe. <laughs> I I appreciate Sean Room putting this in the chat. It's important we all see ourselves represented in Star Wars. Now, finally, this applies to Hilo too. Because I cannot see Batcher now without seeing Hilo. So Everything if, Batcher does. If something does. does happen to Batcher, I will legitimately be devastated. But she's just so like big and and kind of goofy and you know kind of like knocks around into stuff. And Hilo is one hundred percent that. So the I, way she was jumping around inside, but when the the worm was approaching mm -hmm. and she's kind of jumping around, doesn't know what to do. I'm like, that's Hilo all over i get so defensive over cute characters in star wars and i didn't used to be like this i really wasn't and i don't know i don't i think i think grogu is what did it to me but like i i i just stand so firmly in the camp of like star wars at its core like one of the biggest themes about star wars is why revenge is wrong and i say that and i talk that talk anything bad ever happens to Grogu, it is nothing but profanity coming out of my mouth about like, you mother mother kick his dead 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 kill Gideon dead 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 like I am just full sailor mode. Not that I don't cuss a lot already, but like there's an anger behind it when the cute when the cute critters and the cute beings are involved. Um uh, so yeah so anything happens to Batcher um the 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 hottest deepest pit of hell is reserved for Royce Hemlock, um, <laughs> and I hope Crosshair sends him right to it. Uh, like those are one of those situations. Like I, I made the joke to you guys when you were on my show talking about the High Republic, and I was like, you know, 
like Markeon Rowe deserves an Anakin Skywalker and he is in an era where there is nobody even half as crazy as Anakin Skywalker. You know, if anything happens to Batcher, you deserve season one crosshair. And I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> I don't. I'm not. <laughs> you don't get my sympathy. This is not this is this is not a help me take my mask off. Let me look on you with my own eyes kind of story anymore. This is criff around and find out. <laughs> and you again you've earned a season one crosshair if anything happens to this little puppy dog it's funny the way <laughs> this star wars cartoon brings that side out of people including yeah. me. like to go back to the outpost uh, the connected episode when crosshair shot nolan i was cheering and i'm like i know star wars doesn't want you to do mm -hmm. that but also like, yeah, that guy. I'm yeah. so glad. Like that was one of the Star most Wars. satisfying deaths. Star Wars does a really good job at making sure that we understand the difference between like you have to do what you have to do and retributive justice. Like Star Wars is really good at differentiating those two things. There's not a single person across the world who wasn't like, yeah, that's what you get. You got shot in the back like the punk mother mother this that you are you had that coming <laughs> like yeah no it was nothing no no not a single tear was shed for that man as he slumped to the ground with a blaster hole through his chest not a single one it was it was such good release for everyone though because oh, he was being such a major jerk that whole episode and you see it happen you see it click and crosshair's head like what he's gonna do yeah and you go on oh. that journey with him and you're like he's gonna do it he's gonna do it he's yeah, and do then it, he do does it, it do and it, you're do like it, do it. Yes! <laughs> screw that guy there are very few moments in star wars that has like that specific beat of somebody going yeah i'm gonna kill you yeah, <laughs> we need more of them. Yeah, and it happens in a cartoon. <laughs> it happens in a cartoon. It happens. Yeah, you know, like little little baby Star Wars show. You know, yeah, I, I, like that is that is a moment of like, frankly, real world violence you don't see in Andor. You know, where they like that moment across here going, and I'm gonna pop them. <laughs> I would argue that wow, Andor like, has like, that. Crosshair's oh, a jerk, yeah. and I love him. You don't out jerk the jerk. No, you <laughs> there don't. Could be only one. <laughs> there could be, but like, no, I just be like that specific realization. Of, yeah, I'm gonna kill you. Mm. Yep, we're just gonna we're just gonna sit in this and pop. Okay, we're done now. Like it's not it's not the heat of the moment. It might be the most premeditated murder in all Star Wars, where you just watch Crosshair like, uh huh, uh huh, you're dead. We can kind of see Kylo Ren about to do it with Han, but that's like a totally different scenario. Yeah, Definitely. that's true. No, that, that's that's true. I think that's more like him trying to make up his mind if he's going to do it, which in a courtroom is the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not even going to disagree <laughs> with you on that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad everyone's honor. digging he the bad matches. Yeah. Th this is a, an interesting show. It always has been because I feel like it, it got to just jump off of the Clone Wars. Yeah. And it didn't have to go through what so many other series do, animated series, where it's like, we're going to start a little younger and age up. But this one is like, ah, it's just the Clone Wars season eight. And everyone watching it is probably at least in their 20s. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen, I think I've seen one child with Bad Batch related merch in my life, which is so weird. Like, and I, I'm not, all of, all of the kids that are in my life, aside from my sister, like, they're all like a little too young for this stuff. So it's this weird thing where it's like, like, like I'm like I'm waiting for some of the kids, like my nephews and stuff like that, and like you know, like like very young cousins to like be of the age where they're actively watching Star Wars because it's like just out of the age range. And I'm like, oh come on. But yeah, no, yeah. Like every person I know who watches the Bad Batch is my age or you know, in that ballpark. Yeah. It's I wish more young people watched it, but honestly, at this point, I think it is more geared towards people our age, like it people in their 20s and, and older like just the storytelling aspect of it what it's kind of a spin-off of it really yeah. is geared towards our generation versus younger people but 
hopefully, you know, it'll stick around and Disney Plus will keep it on Disney Plus maybe <laughs> for a while and we can all go back to it uh, whenever we want. That would or be if, great. Or if they're going to do physical media for everything, I'm going to go <gasps> ahead and <laughs> yeah. buy it up. G give us some commentaries, please. Oh, God, yeah. That'd that be would, fun. That would be, that'd be wonderful. Just they're all D. Bradley Baker, and he's doing the yep. voice of the director <laughs> yeah. and the writer and the <laughs> Yeah. The the music in this episode was good too. Someone on Twitter I saw pointed out that, you know, when Crosshair gets all of his armor back on, it's like his theme, but a little more uplifted. Yeah, and... it was a bit like the major version of the crosshair. Yeah. Like motif. It was yeah, I like that a lot. It felt very that that beat felt very sequely. Mm. Like you kind of had that like in the same way that there's a lot of moments in the sequel trilogy where it's like and da 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 music cue we see somebody. Yeah. Um and you know very very chewy we're home. That's a very good example <laughs> to use. Yeah. Um <laughs> and it, Yeah, and it, it had that very like okay, cut to character, they walk on music cue stew in it, back to the action. Um where that 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 was a very well, um, well paced moment. Mm -hmm. Very, very much soared on that moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have kept you for about an hour, so uh, we're gonna let you go, and we're gonna stick around and answer some questions. But before you do, uh, let everyone know where they can find you and follow you and what you do. Oh, well, that what you do part is the, is the long part. So you guys can find me primarily at the Nerd Academy podcast. We cover uh, comic book movies, TV, uh, Star Wars specifically. Um, the, Nerd Knights, uh, the Nerd Academy podcast is our main show. And then on the same channel, in the same podcast feed, YouTube, wherever you get podcasts, we also have our Star Wars show, Knights of the Nerd Republic. Uh, big plug, actually. Uh, it's our pinned tweet right now. So if you look up the Nerd Academy podcast on Twitter, uh, we do a versus series for our Patreon. I was joking about it earlier. Next week, next Tuesday, we're going to be doing a live stream. Uh, it's going to be our season four tournament. So we basically take all the winners and all the losers of our versus series and just kind of whittle them down and like a, you know, like we got to remix everything, brand new matchups, everything. Um, and figure out who like the champion of the season is. And if you go to our Twitter, we have a bracket posted for who all will be going head to head against whom. And if you fill out the bracket and submit it to nerdacademypod at gmail.com, whoever has the most accurate bracket is going to win some free teen app merch. Now that'll be streamed live this coming Tuesday. So please go check that out. I'm very excited for that. It's been a minute since we did a proper one of these, uh, versus tournament streams. Um, yeah, the Nerd Academy podcast. We were talking about it earlier. Epic Confrontations, the uh, Star Wars trivia show that is hosted by the Star Wars in the Galaxy podcast. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I have a match coming up uh, in the next couple months. Uh, it's going to be me and my teammate and co-host, Case and Breon, going head-to-head -head with Alden Diaz and his teammate, uh, Michael McCoy. Uh, so that'll be fun for everybody. Um <laughs> Uh, but speaking of Michael and Alden, I'm also on a Star Wars RPG real play show called Ionized Bastards. Uh, it takes place um, kind of in that Mandalorian era, a couple years before the show, I believe. Um, but it's in the establishment of the New Republic era. It's very Guardians of the Galaxy, a little edgier, but in Star Wars, uh, you know, it's got that motley crew of uh, jerks kind of becoming a family. I play an ex-inquisitor named Fabian Martell. Alden Diaz plays Saul Goodman, if he were an Ithorian, <laughs> uh, named Thabor Sheems. Uh, Jerry the Cannon Junkie from the Bombad cast uh, plays 4044, which is like this uh, HK assassin droid, but with the like the primary processor of like a caretaker droid. So he's kind of like a teddy bear, but like with like an anti-tank rifle and is really good at killing. Um, <laughs> and then Dan Miller from Bro Axiom plays this uh, kleptomaniac kind of vagrant cyborg Gungan named Zuzo Yort. So it's very fun. The first season is all out. We're about halfway through the second season. Our next episode should be out next week as well. So yeah, the Nerd Academy podcast, Epic Confrontations, and Ionized Bastards. That's where you can find me. 
Where where do you sleep or when do you sleep rather? <laughs> where and when? <laughs> that's a, that's a great question, Alex. That's a phenomenal question. Uh, I don't think I do actually. <laughs> Uh, I'm convinced that all of the people in the chat and all the people on screen, I'm hallucinating at this point. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, for, for a while there, I had like five Nerd Academy shows going at once. There was a minute there where it was Nerd Academy, Knights of the Nerd Republic, Teen At Movie Club, Campus Life, and Number One Contender, which is our Schmodown podcast. I'm glad we're back down to two. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a, and I'm in I'm a part of other people's projects now. But. We do one or maybe two streams a week. I guess it'll be three this week, but <laughs> sure. that, like <laughs> one or two is enough for me. <laughs> thank you for making time in your busy schedule to come talk Bad Batch with us. And thank yeah. you for having me. It's always a pleasure to get to collaborate with you guys. You guys are the best. Um you are you are the best of us. You are the bastions of the community. It's always a pleasure to get to be on here. Well, thanks, Jared. Well, have a great rest of your night. Go sleep. Go sleep, yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> recording a review of Dune Part 2 tonight. What are you talking about? All right, about? go do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> See you, Jared. Bye. Bye. Well, uh, there, uh, there was one thing I meant to say before he left, but it was before we were finished talking about Bad Batch, but you brought up the music and how great it is, and I was just going to point out that I feel like we don't mention the music or just the animation or the art style enough because it's always consistently great, mm -hmm. but it is worth pointing out every single time. And I'm glad you brought it up. Oh That's yeah. It. It's, I mean, it's kind of a testament to how good it is that you almost don't notice it, but when you start to notice it, you really notice it, you know, it, it, you notice how much it contributes to how you're feeling and how it sets the mood and all that. So, yeah. yeah. But we are going to dive into some questions. And our first one from before the stream even began is from Varissa Lopez. Thank you so much. I'll miss the live, but I really enjoyed the heartbreak of sibling dynamics this episode. Great to really see a character come back from the dark side and actually face some of the people he hurt, in this case, his family. Totally agree. I'm so glad that they're committing to a Crosshair Atonement tour. Molly took her AirPods out and <laughs> can no longer hear me. But yeah, I'm really happy that Crosshair has found redemption. He didn't die immediately. And we're getting to actually explore what it looks like for him to say like, yeah, I've done some bad things, Hunter. And I he wants to make up for it. OK, I fixed it. Sorry. OK, <laughs> that whole time one of my airpods was disconnected for some reason so i was just trying to reconnect it so i could hear in both ears <laughs> <laughs> i gave up on using the airpods for these because half the time yeah something would mess up yeah um can you bring the question back up real quick yep. sibling uh, dynamics great to see a character come back from the dark side and actually face some of the people he hurt right i mean we talk about that a lot in star wars and how we want to see that happen more what his you know what his journey is going to look like from there and yeah i agree it i'm really enjoying seeing how he's making up for lost time making up for some of the stuff he's done and you know he's struggling with a lot of that stuff internally which i think we'll see play out too yeah and keeping with the sibling talk Stuart j thank you for the super chat I have three siblings, and while none of us have seriously tried to kill each other, I can appreciate the dynamic they put in the show. Also, Snow Halud. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that what are, what people are calling the uh, ice worms? I've seen Snow Halud. I've also seen Shice Salud, which I, I like as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are great. Snow Halud is a little easier to say. <laughs> um... This one doesn't have anything to do with Bad Batch, but I'm excited about it. Uh, thanks, Calm Like a Bomb, for being a big mega fan member for 12 months. I blame Molly. I didn't need a new series to read, but she wouldn't stop talking about how good they are. And now I'm halfway through the second Akatar book. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. And I will never stop talking about how good those books are. I came home from Dungeons and Dragons last night. Uh, <laughs> and Molly was... Molly's got like this... I don't know, stand like with a bendy arm that will hold an iPad. 
So mm-hmm. she had her book attached to her nightstand uh, and your lamp was on and she was just passed out listening to the audio book. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked in and it was it, it was uh, some spice you were in the middle of. I don't know when you fell asleep, but I walked in. I did and- not fall asleep during spice. <laughs> so the spice was not. flowing in that part of the book, <laughs> is all I'll say. I'll have to go back and figure out where I fell asleep. And you were just- I was tired. I was <laughs> tired. And you know what? Sometimes that hands free situation isn't the best for me because I will just fall asleep. <laughs> it was adorable. <laughs> Also, uh, a couple of friends of mine uh, whose wives all read Akatar, we're talking about reading Akatar and doing a, a discussion about it. I don't know if we're actually going to go through with it. They all seem excited about it. I think it would be fun. So maybe we'll do it. I think do it'd be fun. it. But Ice, thank you for the next super chat. Another really good episode. I love that we're getting to see the team make amends and love the moments of character development from everyone. Uh, because of that, I, I'm going to real quick. There was one that I wanted to bring up. It's relevant. Uh, from Mark Arthur C. Phillips. Thank you for the question and super chat. Am I wrong for thinking the last episode was filler? And I would argue that it's definitely not filler on multiple levels because of all of the dynamics that I brought up. Uh, I, I think we needed to have an episode where Mm -hmm. Crosshair proved that he wanted to be back and where Hunter decided that he could trust Crosshair again. It would have been weird if we jumped from them all staring at one another at the end of episode four to now everything's fine. It's easy to call things filler when you look at things on like on the surface level especially a show like this, but especially in its last season, there's not going to be any filler. There's no room for it. There's no time for it. There is a purpose to every episode. And honestly, you know, even with the first two seasons, I don't think there are really any true filler episodes where there was no, that, that, that there was nothing in the episode that moved someone's character arc forward, that moved the plot forward a little bit. You just have to kind of dig for it sometimes, but it's more rewarding when you can see the the message and the purpose in those episodes. In this episode, I don't think you had to dig for the meaning behind it. <laughs> <and> why? <laughs> Are we digging? <laughs> Are we digging? Uh, I, I think it was pretty upfront why this episode needed to happen. But also, even if you weren't into the character side of things, the mission to the outpost still took them another step further towards Tantus. They had an Alisae's iPad. They were able to dig into it and find out how many clones were there, get a little more information. Mm -hmm. So on that level, I don't think it was filler from like the overall season's plot. Yeah. And I, I understand that some people just don't connect as thoroughly with a show like this as maybe we do. And if if you're a much more casual viewer, I could definitely see some of these episodes feeling more like filler. And that's okay. But I just I, I I couldn't agree that any of these episodes could be called that. Right. But you know, there's there's shows that I watch that I'm just like a very casual viewer and I'm like, okay, whatever. Like there's probably some episodes of Avatar where I watched and I was the animated series and I was like that felt like filler and then someone could explain why it's not and i'd be like okay i I get it now yeah it's just like i i've kind of gotten rid of the filler term in my head and instead i'm just like i didn't really like that episode (laughs) if it's it's an episode that pops up for what yeah whether or not it lands for you and and emotionally connects with you that's one thing that's like but. this episode, like I said, in my review is my least favorite of the series so far. Uh, I didn't think it was filler and I'm really glad that most people seem to love it. Like I'm seeing a lot of people say it was their favorite of the season and that's great. It just didn't land as strongly for me. But then now that I think about it, I'm an only child. I never grew up fighting with siblings, so I can see 
why like we've already seen a lot of comments from people saying like oh i grew up with three brothers and this hit home <laughs> like mm -hmm. that makes sense yep uh francisco geo says the next super chat here do we know why crosshair's trigger hand is bothering him i haven't seen how he heard it any thoughts so yeah we haven't seen him outright hurt his hand the one that has been shaking right no, but what we saw what happened to him at Tantus. Yeah, he's been experimented on several times, and he mentioned, Do I think, as much. Dr. Ball was doing something to him. It was like blurry and off screen and out of focus, but I, that's enough for me to just be like, okay, the Empire messed him up. Yeah. So yeah, we, we didn't see a specific, like, they took his hand and stabbed it with needles and took his blood there or anything it's just something at tantus hurt him yeah i i kind of get the feeling that it's trauma that has physically manifested whether i mean it could be a combination of physical and mental trauma but a lot of times mental trauma can manifest physically to various degrees so I mean, I hope we see them talk about it specifically, like address it a little more closely in the episode. And they they started to this episode, which is nice. Like Omega yeah. was like, you can have our medical droid <laughs> look at you. Yeah, that's why he's here. <laughs> uh, Darth uh, Nicholas, thank you. I'll, oh, I'll be right back. Uh, sorry, I got to pee. <laughs> okay, can you can you bring me the uh, another? <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you <laughs> um, uh, so dumb Darth Nicholas thank you for the next uh, super chats first one just says happy belated birthday thanks so much Nicholas uh, the next ones your actual questions are I'm usually one to complain about monster of the week sequences looking at you Mando season 3 but since the ice worm was clearly an homage to Dune one of Star Wars Star Wars is less talked about influences. I couldn't help but go bonkers over its appearance. The timing of this episode's release couldn't be better since I just saw Dune 2 on IMAX yesterday. A truly mind-blowing experience, even better than part one. Have you had a chance to watch Dune part two yet? Yeah, we actually did that for my birthday. So it was good timing. And yeah, we we had all the same thoughts watching this episode. Uh, just funny timing. I don't think it was on purpose. But it, it was just lucky that, that we had our sandworms over the weekend. Now on Wednesday, we get some ice worms, which is just fun. Uh, but yeah, I, I like Dune 2 a lot. Uh, I, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't seem to love it as much as a lot of people do. I don't have nearly the same connection with that universe as uh, a lot of people do. Like I have friends who love all of the Dune books. I've only read the first one uh, and it was a, a little too much for me. I think it just like, I, I don't love like super hard sci-fi or super hard fantasy. I, I'm more of like a, a casual, a soft sci-fi, soft fantasy person. Like that's why Star Wars is my bread and butter. It's like the perfect amount for me. But like Dune 2 as a movie was crafted so amazingly well. Uh, it just felt like everyone that was making it was on top of their game. So, yeah. And I, I'm glad I read the book, though. <laughs> I feel like that helped me a lot. Uh, and I'll pull up this relevant one, too. Thanks, Nicholas. The Dune novel is awesome, too. Quite a dense read. Uh, have you read it? I'm hoping to read Dune Messiah before the next movie, but I'm told the other Dune books are not nearly as good as the first, if good at all. So what I've been told, for uh, this is fun. After we saw Dune 2, I saw it with a bunch of my friends, and uh, I've, I had read the first book, but that was right before Dune 1 came out. So we went out, we were getting drinks and dinner after the movie, and then I, I had my friends all play Dune Explained with me, where I was asking them all the questions, and then they were answering me. So that was nice to be on the other side of things. Uh, I've been told that reading Dune Messiah is worth it. 
Oh, I genuinely wanted your cerveza crystal. Oh, it's been sitting in my desk this whole time. It's not cold. I guess that's true. <laughs> All right. Thank you. you. I can bring you that. No, that's true. <laughs> Molly pointed out that, that that beer in her office is probably warm now. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they said that reading Dune Messiah is worth it. It's kind of the longer you go, the, the weirder they get. I finished the first Dune book and was kind of thinking, uh, I don't know that I want to read another one. But after the way Dune Part 2 ended, I was like, mm, okay, I kind of want to read Dune Messiah. Because Dune Part 2 went a little bit farther than the book did as far as... And now the Holy War is beginning. But yeah, I, I'm trying to decide if I will read it or not. Akatar? Yep. <laughs> Still talking about it? Uh-huh. No, I heard you talking about Dune. Uh-huh. What a weird and, story. And ap apparently it only gets weirder. I know. <laughs> I Y'all don't want to hear my Dune <laughs> thoughts. They are not nice. <laughs> They're not mean. Hmm. They're, it's They're, kinda, they might be to big Dune fans. <laughs> I mean, we talked about it. It's basically the same thing of like, great movie. I don't understand a lot of that. I don't understand why some people are so, so obsessed with it, but that's fine. Uh, Miranda here says we need a survey set crystal reaction for the chat. We need an emote. Oh, I could probably make that like right now <laughs> don't you don't have to do it right now we can make one for tomorrow's lego stream how about that okay but that is a great idea thank you <laughs> speaking of emotes welcome to the bigs mega fans recovery hacker <laughs> if you join and become a bigs mega fan you can use all of our emotes and celebrate uh the holy hour of 603 with us <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn to pull up super chats i'm i'm getting there are we <laughs> are we still on ice's uh -huh. top, top one okay um i keep starting to like crosshair more and more definitely taking that as a win loved crosshair tidying up the helmets of mayday and the other clones small touches like that really made the episode uh i get hunkers hunkers what <laughs> Yes. I need help and dinner. <laughs> I need Hunter's appreciation. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to read this? <laughs> I'm out of breath, first of all, from coming up the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> I get Hunter's apprehension, and I still, I promise I can read. I still feel Crosshair is unnecessarily antagonistic, but so is Hunter. They're both getting there. I really appreciate that the show is taking the time to explore that. I agree. So now I was looking at. Uh, You're maybe, still doing it right now, well, even though. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't have space for it. I'll have to choose an emoji to swap out, but that's <clears> fine. <throat> so let, let me read that again. Uh, yeah. Okay. We talked about the Mayday scene and how great that was. Um, but yeah, I, I also agree that the show is able to take the time to explore smaller moments like this, hmm. just to, okay, let's talk about like Avatar, Avatar, the live action version, even though we enjoyed it, mm -hmm. did not have the ability to take the time for smaller moments that really make the cartoon stand out, I think, uh, because it was only eight episodes and they just had to plow through the plot beats. And you kind of miss those character beats. So yeah. I, I'm glad that we have a 15 or 16 episode season, uh, depending on which season it is for Bad Batch. But we get the time to explore all these smaller moments. It's great. Mm -hmm. So so much of the Bad Batch has been able to explore smaller moments and really make you feel them. Or at least that's how it feels to, to me as like a mega fan of the show. <laughs> yeah. So it again, just I think it depends on how close you connect to a show like this emotionally, but when it when it hits, it really hits. Mm. 
Uh, Darth Nicholas, thanks for the next question. Do you think we'll learn why Emery is a car and not a FET, despite being a FET clone? <laughs> I, I don't do think hope. anyone wants to go around using the name FET if they're trying to be an Imperial scientist and like not have any association with bounty hunters. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll raise some eyebrows clones. probably, but it, it does seem strange that she has a last name. We talked about this, I think, on our Q&A last week. Yep. Of just why does she have a full name? We don't know yet. I think that's something they'll probably dig into. I'm kind of assuming that she is like a secret clone. I mean, we didn't know for sure. A lot of people suspected, but we didn't know for sure until the end of season two. So she might be like Hemlock's secret clone assistant or something, secret project. Yeah. Well, you said that she she could have been like, what did you say? You said that <clears throat> she could have tried to escape at one point and then didn't. Yeah, I, I, I'm i kind of wondering just the way that she acts if she was imprisoned, tried to get away from Hemlock, but kept failing and failed enough times that she is now like, there's no hope in escape. So... Crosshair, Omega, just go back to your cells. It's better that way. I think she's got Stockholm Syndrome. Mm, the, yeah. But yeah, I, I I hope that they dig into her a little more and we get some answers. I think I talked about on the Q&A just that maybe they gave her a regular sounding name to throw off the scent that maybe she is another special clone. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, you know, if if they see clones working on clones, like if Palpatine sees that or knows about that, he might be like, that's weird. I don't know if I like that. And yeah, like maybe she's a little more trustworthy if she passes for not a clone. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. It is very weird that they gave her a full on full on first and last name. <laughs> It's weird to us. Normal people who watch this show don't care. But, you know, yeah. Star Wars fans are like, what does it mean? Sure. <laughs> uh, Buck, thanks so much for the super chat. Bye, Pride. I think that was... I, I should have read that out while uh, Jared was here. Yeah. I, I saw it, and I meant to, and we'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Buck. Uh, Nicholas, thank you for another one. It was nice, albeit sad, to see Mayday's helmet again after one of the TK pilots said, Mayday, Mayday in the first step. Though obviously not a reference to the clone. I mean, bringing up Mayday again is always going to be sad. Because mm. he's... It, Bad Batch keeps doing that. They, they introduce new, almost one-off episode clones that are, like, fan favorites instantly. Mayday's one. Hauser's another one. I forget uh, I forget who it was at the beginning of season two, but people really liked that guy. And then he was shot immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hate it when that happens? I really do. <laughs> Ice, thank you for another one. Definitely agree with your com uh, comparison to Zuko in Avatar The Last Airbender, and I definitely don't do that with most redemption arcs. Zuko's is just a in a league of its own. Yep. I, I do think that Zuko is like a gold standard redemption character. <laughs> mm -hmm. Plus, I mean, it helps that he's young. And mm -hmm. when you get to learn, this is going to become Avatar explained, but you get to see and learn why he is the way he is. And you're like, this poor kid, you know, he's so he's so similar to Ben Solo slash Kylo Ren. I uh, I'm just so mad that we never got to get to to get to see Ben Solo really like be redeemed for and and have to live out his days. Yes, he did terrible things as Kylo Ren. Yeah, he did worse things than than Zuko did yeah, for sure. But I, yeah, I, I it could have been done though. It could have been done. That's it, it. Was watching Avatar for the first time sometime in between 2017 and 2019. But watching Avatar made me swap sides from 
I I don't want redemption for Kylo Ren to never mind. I really, really do. <laughs> yeah, just I mean, it's it's definitely harder writing wise. It's harder to 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 show what that looks like. But let's go there with Star Wars. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, Miranda here. Thank you for the next two super chats. Finally got home and watched in time for the Clone Zone. I felt a lot in this episode, Dune Worms most notably, but also Batcher digging into the base, like Wolf Link and being inside the ice, like that tower in the Gerudo Highlands. Some folks have said Zuko vibes from Crosshair. Uh, I'm some folks, <laughs> but I'm getting more <laughs> Katra from she -Ra. I have not seen that. As far as age demographics, they didn't need to do this for kids because they have young Jedi. Cheers, Alex and Molly. <laughs> Cheers. That that is true. I think we were talking about uh how this show feels more geared for adults and yet yeah, they they have young Jedi adventures for children even though I'm pretty sure a lot of adults still watch it. Maybe as many adults as the kids do. <laughs> but the, I really I like mean, it. We I mean, we've tried to get some of our friends kids to watch it and they do not care about young Jedi adventures. <laughs> so, some of them do. Some Michael's of them. Son, Michael's son likes it. <laughs> oh, does he? Mm -hmm. Good for him. He's got good taste. <laughs> we got him. We'll get him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've heard good things about She-Ra, but we have never seen it. Mm. Uh, Ice has another couple of super chats here. This might sound odd, but even little things like just seeing Crosshair in his old armor and even shooting blue blaster bolts again made me so happy. Yes. That, like I pointed out, the, the his theme music that plays in a slightly more like upbeat, uplifting way at that moment really sold that moment. Mm hmm Uh, happy to see them back on Pabu and finally have Echo show up. <laughs> <laughs> Loved seeing him and Omega hug and reunite again and their moment talking at the end. I think their relationship is very underrated. I love cool Uncle Echo and his like, I, I was saying this when we were recording our commentary, but I was like, Echo gives me vibes of the cool uncle that just like didn't really want kids, but gets along with kids great and is good at like inserting moments of humor when they are needed. Yeah. And she just hasn't had as much time to spend with echo. Like season two felt like her spending a lot more time with tech. And then she was obviously distraught when echo left and very happy when he came back. But I feel like she hasn't had any really strong, memorable moments with echo the way she has with all of the other ones. So hopefully she gets to go on like a single adventure with him or something. Yeah, if we have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ice goes on to say, Echo's armor not being weathered like Hunter and Wreckers probably means he hasn't been with them on many missions since season two in the search for Omega. Not to say he wasn't looking for Omega as hard as they were. He was probably just doing it using the resources and connections he and Rex have built up with the clone underground and honestly was probably being smarter about what missions he went on than Hunter and Wrecker were because Hunter was being super reckless. Yeah, mm. I mean, I think Echo was probably balancing saving Omega with saving all the clones, which is basically the same mission. Like, all roads pointed to Tantus. Mm -hmm. So I think that was his... He was probably helping, but not. And I, I agree. I think you're on the money that Hunter was probably doing anything and everything and going and taking jobs with criminal syndicates <laughs> to, to try to find Omega. And Echo was probably being a little more by the book. Maybe. <laughs> Miranda here says, I'm loving the crystal meme template so much. <laughs> I'm glad I made the shorter one. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're going to see a lot more of it in the Q&A once I get my hands on the uh, stuff to edit for tomorrow. So it's all sitting on your desk right now. Look, 
okay, well, I'll start working on it. You keep doing this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm just saying, like, once I get my hands on stuff to edit, it, it's, it might, it has the potential to get a lot more ridiculous. So. Uh, Darth Nicholas has another super chat. Thanks so much, Nicholas. Uh, would it make sense to consider Emery a slave of Hemlocks in a way, or would that comparison be too far fetched? I don't think so. And there was something I noticed when we were recording our commentary that when they plug into Nalvasay's data pad, most of the um, Arabesh is gibberish, but the bottom says inventory. And then Echo says, oh, it's a list of every clone in Tantus. And I'm like, oh, that's gross. I don't know if that was on purpose or if it was supposed to be I don't know if that was a conscious decision or not, but it would not surprise me if Hemlock viewed all clones as inventory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a sense, I think he sees all clones as just his property. So, no, I don't think that's far fetched to say. Especially if, you know, like you said, she might have. Uh... My mind just went blank. What did she, you say she had? Emory? Stockholm Syndrome? Stockholm Syndrome, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, uh, I don't like using the S word so much, but basically, yeah, that's, I think that's what she is at this point. But you can see her kind of starting to wake up to a couple things. You, we've seen her waver at moments. So I look forward to her eventual escape from Tantus, I'm hoping. Yeah, I mean, she certainly, I, I doubt she's getting paid to be there. And the whole, not the whole, but part of the Clone Wars asks the question of the morality of making a clone army in the first place. And it, it's like, look, all of these people are people, even though they're clones. So I, I think this is a progression of that. Mm. Uh, Ice goes on to say, if I had one complaint, it's that they don't seem to be addressing the loss of tech much. Echo mentions him, and I do wish we saw a Crosshair's reaction to his death. But they kind of hint he already knew. Still, it would have been interesting to see Crosshair's reaction to that news. Also, it also doesn't help with the theories, lol. What are your thoughts? So, they haven't really talked much about tech's death they've they've shown us little small moments like between crosshair and omega and with tech's goggles still be on being on hunter's like little desk area where he used to work they're still grieving but yeah they haven't really talked about it much yeah i wouldn't mind more discussion of it but i also like I feel like it has happened off screen. Crosshair's little moment of uh, learning that Tech made Omega memorize all the plans, and he's like, of course he did. Like, I think it's being acknowledged, but just not directly talked about. I don't know. It's something I would like to see. I don't know if it needs to be done, so it just probably comes down to <laughs> the efficiency of the overall season. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I would like to see all of the clones talk about it. I, I feel like there would be some some potential, maybe misplaced anger towards Crosshair because Tech died on a mission where they were trying to save Crosshair. But that's not Crosshair's fault. But still, that could that could be some good conflict. Yeah. And you're right. It doesn't help the theories of people you know, including myself at times, I'm like, is he gone forever? Are they going to bring him back somehow? It'll be this like weird Frankenstein killer thing. I, I don't know. So it... I'm, I'm just sitting with nah, he's gone. And I, I hope he is acknowledged more, but mm. I don't, I don't really think it's adding like fuel to the fire for theories or anything necessarily. Not fuel, but not a, a fire no water, extinguisher no either. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, and then Ice goes on to say, I also liked that Echo was a bit apprehensive about Crosshair 2 at first, 
which I think makes sense considering how he treated Echo before Order 66. In Aftermath, Crosshair openly mocked Echo's injuries and disability. That never sat well, sat well with me, but I enjoy the sarcastic no hug for me. Depends on your intel exchange when they saw each other. Yeah, they, they seem to be more cold. I mean, Echo hasn't spent as much time with the Bad Batch as the rest of them have together, obviously. Yeah. He, he does seem to be a little bit on the outside of things. Sure. And uh, Omega's character arc might be my favorite of the series. She felt so mature in this episode, but still very like herself. Seeing her recover, but also grow from her experiences on Tantus is amazing. That sassy, I'm older than you are, little brother, with Crosshair was perfection. <laughs> he even chuckled. That might be my favorite moment, to be honest. I love that moment, too. I was so glad to hear someone talk about that, that she's like, technically, I'm older than all y'all. Y'all need to relax and act your age. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> uh, Rio Sage, thanks for becoming a Bigs Mega fan. Welcome. Right at the end of the show. <laughs> but <laughs> we still, are gonna start. welcome. Yeah, thanks so much. We are going to start wrapping up because uh, we have to get ready for a wedding. Uh, we're, we're oh, I thought you were going to say love is blind. <laughs> that too, eventually. I'm but so we, excited. <laughs> but we we have to pack. We're going to a wedding for the weekend. I'm I'm. It's the first time I'm meeting a first a first a best man. A in first a wedding. and best man. Uh, heading down to Florida for our friend's wedding, and uh, we got to pack and get ready to do that. But we will watch Love Is Blind while we eat for sure. Oh yeah, we will. Which is just, we're, we're going to get like both ends of the spectrum as far as love and, and weddings are concerned. <laughs> sure, yeah. We're going to get a sloppy mess tonight and then we'll get to be a part of a beautiful ceremony over the weekend. But it'll make us appreciate it more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, podcast of the wills. <laughs> Sorry, you made it right here at the end as we wrap up. And also Imperial <laughs> Remnant, thanks so much for joining the Bigs Mega Fans. Thanks, guys. We'll have uh, hopefully we'll have some new fun emotes tomorrow for the Lego stream. I, I will make one for. Are we doing a Lego? <laughs> it's so good. Uh, yeah, I, I was planning on doing a Lego stream tomorrow. All right, then as you as will see us tomorrow it. with our survey stick crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll drink the other prop that I made. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Uh, have, a, have a great rest of your night and may the force be with you. <laughs>